Okay, uh, I welcome you all in the research circle. Uh, I, I think I'm uh, audible to all the participants. Okay, so for today's webinar, we're having with us uh, Dr. Afroz Akhtar Tina. Uh, let me let me tell you something about uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, sir, as a Daffodil da International University, Bangladesh, as a senior lecturer in Department of English, uh, with the academic publications and presentations in different national and international conferences, she has earned in inspiration to continue with her research interest, which includes assessment, learner autonomy, ELT, psycho, uh, sociolinguistics, mobile learning, uh, American literature. So uh, uh, we will continue. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. First of all, I'd like to thank Research Circle and the coordinator and the entire team actually for uh, you know inviting me to this wonderful platform. I'm very much happy to be a part of yours today. Now, uh, the topic is very interesting and I have, you know, a lot of things to share with you. So uh, let me start the screen sharing first. But for that, I would request the authority to actually give me that access. Okay, so that I can share the screen because I have a lot of things to share with you all. Yes, please enable that. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. So very soon you would be able to see my screen. Yes, so I think you can see my screen. Yeah. Is it so? Is my screen visible? Yes, yes. we can Thank see. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, first of all, I'd like to mention that today I also have my students you know, in the session. So I not only have participants outside Bangladesh, but also I have my students whom I taught actually, whom I have been teaching uh, since last year. So they are also here and why they are here. Now I can answer the question actually on behalf of them. The thing is they also want to be teachers. They want to be future teachers. And that's why they're here to enjoy the session, to learn something, to explore something. Although they are familiar with this thing, Moodle, I mean, with the platform, with blended learning system a little bit, but as teacher, they want to know actually with you all, how we can utilize this Moodle, I mean, this blended learning platform to engage students, learners, both inside and outside the classroom. Now, as you have uh, known already, 
you have come across this information that I work as a senior lecturer in the Department of English at Daffodil International University. This university is in the capital city of Bangladesh, which is Dhaka. Uh, we have beautiful green campus over here in the capital. And uh, I would also like to mention that I am an e-teacher alumna of the US Department of State, Dhaka, Bangladesh. And obviously from the term e-teacher, you understand that I am an online teacher. Now, what actually did I do? A lot of things. Let me start sharing with you all. So this one, the first slide actually, uh, well, the second of course, uh, but the first regarding the topic, uh, well, we are 21st century teachers and also we are 21st century students. So 21st century teachers and at the same time we are 21st century learners. So we have been actually listening to the terms, the terminologies, the phrases, all these words thousand times, you know, since the lockdown, since the lockdown especially. And uh, yes, the term e-learning has been in, you said, since the beginning. So yes, these are familiar things, but why and how actually? So this one, why? Because uh, we are actually focusing on blended learning platform. So not only taking classes, not only conducting classes these days, but also what? But also we want to engage our learners. We want to engage our students. We also want to engage ourselves as well. But through what? Through which platform and how? Through several platforms. But today my focus will be on Moodle. And why? Well, you can see the first thing, the first point in my slide because it's the world's most popular learning platform these days. So this is the first and foremost thing. It is the world's most popular learning platform these days. And the second point, with hundreds of millions of users worldwide, more organizations choose us to support their education and training needs than any other platform around the world. So it's not about school, college, or university learning. Not about only school, college, or university learning. It's about, it's about each and every sectors. And they are actually seeking help from educators, from teachers, because how we can actually uh, will overcome the challenges that we are us usually facing these days when we think of online teaching and learning. So that is why I have selected or chosen Moodle. And also uh, the other point is, well, I, in my university have been using Moodle since, since 2015. So from that you can understand it has been in use in my university, not actually this year, but from till 2015. But obviously there are a lot of changes these days in the platform. Later, I would show you my entire course with you. As I have mentioned that directly, the students of that course are also are here in this session today. So, well, they would also be able to share something after the presentation with you all. So from there, you can, uh, you would be able to get, you know, a live picture of how we can actually engage students through Moodle and how we can utilize this blended learning platform. Now, what is Moodle? I don't know whether you are familiar with this term or not, but I guess, yes, you are, because most of you are online teachers these days. So it is a free software, you know, it's free, entirely free, a learning management system providing a platform for e-learning. So it's entirely a free software and it's a platform for e-learning and definitely it conceptualize various courses. So there is the possibility to conceptualize various courses, even the structure, the syllabus, curriculum, whatever we want. And 
the second point is about what does it stand for because we only heard here moodle m -double o d l e moodle but what does it stand for it's a huge name okay we actually focus on the abbreviated form every time but uh, well it stands for modular object oriented dynamic learning environment which is in short moodle and one very interesting information is that about 14 million consumers these days are engaged actually through this learning management platform. So from there, that, from these statistics, I guess, uh, you understand how popular it is these days. And that is why we will be talking about Moodle. Now, the next point is about promoting learner involvement. Now, uh, it has a very close connection. My presentation today or my session or workshop, whatever you say, has a direct connection with learner autonomy, you know, autonomous learning. Why? Because whenever we think of uh, engaging learners or motivating them or promoting their uh, motivation, they will obviously we think how actually we can utilize all these things together. And for that, will our students or learners will have to take the responsibility on their own. I repeat, the learners or students should take their own learning responsibilities. And why is that? Well, very simple. As a teacher, I can't take the responsibility of thousands of students together at the same time. It's not possible. So will the idea, you know, this idea is very important. We'll have to motivate our students or learners that way that they'll have to take their responsibility. Other than that, it's very difficult, you know, to, I mean, teach them something, to make themselves understand something, to make them learn something. So this has a direct connection with this usage of blended learning platforms, in our case, Moodle. And uh, here I have mentioned several points. For example, students come to class with an established worldview formed by years of prior experience and learning. We all have this kind of experience. Uh, if we are online teachers, we know that students have some you know, pre preconceptions, they have some perceptions and uh, they come to the class with those perceptions and it's very usual thing it's not an exceptional thing and the second point is well even as it evolves a student's worldview filters all experiences and affects their interpretations of observation so that's also important and the other point is well for students to change their worldview requires work as i have mentioned that they have all kind of perceptions preconceptions but to change those preconceptions or perceptions well obviously they'll have to work on their own so working is required hard work engagement motivation all these are related terms which are required you know to change those perceptions or to explore more and uh, well apart from that students learn from each other as well as from the teacher and that's true it's not true that well we are the only person who can teach our students of course not they can also teach each other so peer teaching peer learning peer feedback all these all these are very very crucial when we think of engaging them so all these are i mean such important and relevant factors you know and the next point is students learn better by doing. Yes, of course. So they'll have to do something on their own and allowing and creating opportunities for all to have a voice promotes the construction of new ideas. So all these are very, very significant ways, you know, to engage our learners. Now, the next point uh, will ways how to engage our students through Moodle. For example, I would focus on two specific things today, forum and embedding, but I have a lot of other things to share with you through the slides. Uh, but before sharing anything, let me share one of my courses with you. 
which is important. You know, you'll have to see a course on your own so that uh, you can feel. Yes, I'm. Uh, I would like to uh, share my screen, one of my courses with you, so that so that you can see. the course directly. Okay, just wait. Uh, I'm sharing one of my courses with you so that it gives an, you an entire idea of uh, how, how to engage students. Well, this is the course that I wanted to share with you, I think you can see the course. And uh, fortunately, I'm very fortunate that two of my students from this course are here with all of us today. And uh, at the end, obviously, I would request them to share their learning experiences with you so that you can get actually a live feedback from my students who have been through in the process uh, since uh, I guess uh, 2019. To, since 2019, because I have taught them, I think, uh, two or three courses, so they are familiar with Moodle and they have been in the process since then. Now, this is the course which uh, I would like to share with you all today. The name of this course, as you can see, is Advanced English Grammar and uh, well, uh, Moodle has thousands of ways to engage students or learners, as I have mentioned that this is one of the most popular blended learning platforms these days. So obviously it has some specific reasons. And what are the reasons? Now, if I scroll down, you would be able to see that there are the number of students at the beginning. You can see that I had 133 enrolled students in this course, this is a complete course. Okay. I did, I completed the course uh, last semester. Uh, the classes end uh, probably within 10th of December. So this is uh, no more a continuing course. So the course ended. And as you can see, I had 133 students in the course and 132 students were in progress. Actually, they completed the course, but due to some technical difficulties, well, uh, uh, we, I, I cannot show you that uh, 132 students, how 132 students actually completed all the things. But uh, these 132 students actually have completed all the required tasks or activities and that is why the number is over here. They uh, say that they are in progress. Actually, they have completed all the required tasks or activities and uh, only one student actually is showing, although it's showing that one student completed the course, but actually all 133 students completed the course. But sometimes, you know, due to some technical difficulties, uh, it may not show. It may not actually give us that clear idea how many students complete the course. But if I show you the individual task or activities, you would be able to see that uh, how each and every student has completed the entire coursework. Now, uh, if I scroll down, you would be able to see that at the beginning, I have the introduction and course overview. So this is how I actually design my course. And one of the most important features of Moodle is that, well, uh, we have that freedom, a teacher has that freedom, an educator have that freedom to actually design the course, include the course, or uh, you know, design everything the way he or she wants. So this is how I design. I have this introduction and course overview at the beginning. I welcome my students and this is the name of the course. And uh, here is a welcome note actually for my students. Uh, a very basic thing regarding the course and a welcome note. And uh, these are the actually link of the introduction and course overview. So I have recorded something for my students. I recorded my voice actually uh, regarding the introduction and course overview and I shared uh, the recordings with my students. I actually shared this same course with three 
batches, three sections, as you can see. I had uh, 43A, 43B, and 44. These three are numbers. And uh, I had actually three batches and uh, two batches and three sections. And I have actually shared individual recordings with them for each of them so that they don't get confused. Because, you know, when we have too many batches or sections in the same course, uh, we also should have, we should uh, actually ensure that our students are not actually that confused. So this is also something which a teacher uh, should focus on while designing the entire course. So this is uh, the recorded link. And after that, as you can see that I uh, actually included a photo of mine so that they know me actually physically because there were some students who uh, were new actually in the course. They have never met me even, I don't know, uh, even, even if they have met me, I mean, in the corridor or in the campus, uh, maybe we didn't connect, we didn't talk actually. So that is why my picture should be there. I thought that and uh, a little bit introduction, a little bit information uh, regarding myself. And uh, one of the best ways, you know, to share information is through Google site. So as you can see, I have shared my Google site link with my students so that they can actually uh, click the link and they can know their instructor. So this is also important, you know. Well, the students whom we will be teaching, they, they should know actually that our instructor or our teacher actually is capable of taking the course or, or is capable to conduct the course. So we are actually in the safe hands. So that is why this is also important, you know. Please share your links or profiles with your students. And I have shared too. Uh, in my university, uh, I, I have to share my updates actually uh, through the IT department and we have uh, an exclusive web profile of each of the faculty members in the university. And our uh, university website is a very enriched website. And that is why I have also shared that university web profile also along with the Google site profile with my students. And later, actually, I have yeah. shared the entire course. I have shared the entire course outline, entire course outline. That is important. So what would I teach actually? As you can see, I have started with the course code, course title, my name, email address, cell number once again, so that they can actually get all the things together. I think, uh, I mean, I mean a compilation of all the information together. And after that, a brief overview of the course, as you can see, and the course objective, obviously, I had some, uh, I, uh, I mean, some specific course objectives and then, then the learning outcomes. Obviously, students should know that after completing the course, we will be able to do this or that. So we all do this actually as teachers, but we can share. The thing is, we can share the entire course outline over here on Moodle. So you can see that how wonderful the platform is. All the things together on Moodle. So this is the beauty of Moodle, you know, as you can see marks distribution. This is how in my university, we distribute marks actually um, throughout the semester regarding a course. So as you can see, everything is over there, the entire course outline. And later I have shared my counseling hours. We counsel our students regularly. And uh, if my students click the link, they would be able to see that this is how uh, well, this is the time when our teacher is available to counsel us. So just simply clicking this link, through clicking this, uh, I mean, link, they would be able to get this slot. So this is, you know, interesting. And this is the beauty of Moodle. We can actually include anything, starting from link uh, to file, to folder, to thousands of attachments, videos, audios, recordings, YouTube links, anything on Moodle. So this is the beauty, you know, just simply clicking this link, well, my students would get my counseling hours. And this is the mentoring and counseling system that uh, as university teachers, we maintain in our university. We have a particular mentoring and counseling system, you know, and this is the link of uh, that uh, mentoring and counseling page website. 
and uh, I actually have included this also in my model so that my students can see if they want that well ma'am I actually want to see whether uh, whether well I have included this or I have mentioned my problem or I have discussed this problem with you or not. So if they want, I can click this, I can show them that yes, you have shared this information with me last month on probably 7th of December. And uh, I can also tell him or her that no, you haven't share, shared your problem with me uh, well in the entire month, last month. So this is how you know we can keep the uh, record. And uh, as you can see later, I have included the soft copies of the textbooks or resources. So as I have mentioned, we can do anything and everything on Moodle. But as our session today is about learner engagement, so the first thing that I would like to mention is that how actually we can engage students directly through forum. So this is the link. As you can see, this is how actually I engage my students I mean, I uh, try to engage my students through discussion. So discussion, engaging students through discussion, which is something very, very important. And we understand this as teachers. If the students don't discuss, if the students don't share, then what is the use of this learning? What is the use of lecturing? Because anyone can give lecture, you know? And yes, it's, it's true these days because there are thousands of YouTube videos. If I simply tell them, if I simply tell them that yes, this is the way through which you can join two sentences using, a, a, I mean, a conjunction or, a, I mean, a, for example, an adverbial clause, making an adverbial clause or adjectival clause. So if I simply tell them and they do some exercise as well, that would be a kind of boring session and even they won't be able to connect with each other. Okay. Uh, they, they would have a kind of robotic feeling. But then what about after the class? They should try to solve problems practically. So we'll have to create that atmosphere for our students. And yes, forum discussion is something very, very significant actually regarding this and i have found personally i have found this personally that uh, yes uh, well this is something so important you know these days uh, and uh, truly i must say that my students have mentioned directly that yes ma'am we actually are uh, you know enjoying we are enjoying this so much so as i have uh, mentioned that uh, this forum discussion is very, very important. Now, let me share, let me share another screen with you, directly with you, uh, so that you can directly see how my students actually are engaging them, themselves actually through this. Yes, I have clicked that link. And as you can see, it has this title, submitting classwork and providing feedback to each other for every lesson. So this is the, I mean, title of my forum, actually my forum that I have created for my students. Uh, we give our students classwork. We also give them homeworks. So submitting classwork, homework, whatever they do over here in the platform and providing feedback to each other. So not only waiting for teachers feedback, you know, and it's also not possible every time to provide feedback uh, to each of these students individually every time. It's not possible for a teacher to do that regularly. So uh, students should also feel that importance of providing feedback to each other because uh, they are responsible for their own learning. Now, if I scroll down, you would be able to see before this write-up that I have included a picture. And you know, Moodle has this beauty. Once again, you can in include visuals, infographics, images, the way you want. So I have included these pictures so that it can attract my students and definitely pictures, visuals, uh, infographics uh, attract everyone. And that is why I have uh, tried to include uh, as many pictures as I could actually, uh, but obviously relevant pictures, of course. So I included a topic uh, in the very first week for my students, I have shared one topic 
and I have requested them actually to answer this particular question, which you can see discuss about how the social media has changed our life or our computers stealing our privacy. So I shared this topic with my students in the very first week and I requested them to write down their ideas in the forum I would show you later. But from the second week, please see, I would request all of you to look at this. Well, from second week, I requested my students, I requested my students to include everything over here in the forum, their classwork, homework, whatever they want. And also, and also I requested them to provide feedback to each other. So that is the important thing. From second week, from second week, my students started actually submitting their classwork and also homework and also started providing feedback to each other. So this is how we can engage our students. And as you can see at the end, the last point is that this activity has some marks. So I actually included, I gave, I finally actually gave two marks, two marks actually for this forum post. I didn't review the marks actually at the beginning. My students are here. Uh, they would, uh, I think, uh, share this with you. Uh, I haven't shared that I'm going to give you two marks for this. I only shared that, well, if you complete the forum activity properly, then definitely I'm going to give you some marks for this. So that was the kind of incentive. That was the kind of incentive for which my students, you know, started, I mean, writing, started maintaining the uh, forum every week. So that is how my students engaged with each other. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, the first one, why should we teach manners and etiquette in the classroom? Probably this was a topic in one of the classes, I guess. And uh, as you can see that there are five responses. Well, started by Sharmin Akhtar, as, as you can see, the last post was of Taslima Jahan, 31st October. So regarding this post, uh, well, Taslima Jahan, this student, uh, replied or responded 31st October regarding this post, regarding this topic. And as you can see the number, you know, at the right, at the right corner, right column, under replies, you would be able to see the number. So five, five students wrote actually regarding this topic. So five students, and that's a huge thing. I have almost 40 students in a class. So you can understand if five students have responded to this single post, then obviously these five students have read this, read this properly and that is how they responded. Let me open this up for you. Yes, I have opened this for you. You know, this is the question actually, the topic that they had. And as if I scroll down, you would be able to see that Sharmin Akta wrote this. And later, another student, Asmaul, and this is her ID. You know, Moodle also automatically takes the IDs of the student. That is also another beauty of Moodle. Asmaul responded after Sharmin's post. And then, yes, look, Jahid Hassan, another student with this ID, have wrote so many things. Look at this. So many students are responding and how they actually are engaging them. And look, this is another student, Santhia Reza Shammi. She wrote something else. And then Jahid Hassan once again, once again focused on so many things, you know? And then finally, you can say Taslima Jahan. This is another student, the student whom I mentioned just before this, that how did he or she share? you know, so many things. So I guess you understood that how, how, you know, students are engaging, how they're engaging themselves through forum. And this has been a wonderful experience, believe me. And I guess if you can engage your students through forum properly with incentives, with motivation, high motivation, obviously your students uh, would definitely engage themselves outside the classroom as well. So I, I am actually mentioning all these things practically in front of you. And if I scroll down, you would be able to see 
that uh, yes, I have included an assignment over here. So Moodle has all the features, you know, later through slides, I would share uh, some, uh, I mean, brief ideas about how actually uh, we can utilize the platform, I mean, through several ways individually, but let me share the last important thing with you uh, regarding uh, student engagement, and that is about, you know, this one. So what is this? This is actually Padlet. I believe you know this. And before sharing my Moodle course, uh, through one of my slides, I mentioned uh, the point embedding. So this is something which I embedded. Let me open this up for you. So this one, this is a Padlet, you know, this is Padlet. And how we can engage our students through Padlet? Yes, of course, we can actually color the Padlet the way we want. We can include color, we can include um, text, we can include even pictures, we can include information, we can write anything. So we can, you know, include emojis. At the left, you can see this emoji, uh, the emoji that I love. You can see this emoji at the uh, left uh, of this Padlet of mine. So we can include emojis and so many other things in Padlet. Well, uh, this Padlet actually uh, has been used to collect student feedback, student weekly feedback. So I have actually tried to collect feedback from my students weekly through this Padlet. So after completing two classes, after completing two classes, my students were supposed to share their learnings only, learnings only, through this Padlet, as you can see, if I scroll down, there are so many things from my student, but believe me, these are only their learnings, not anything else. So this is also a interesting way to engage our students, you know, they should reflect, they should reflect. So this is a kind of reflection of what they have learned after completing, after doing the two classes or uh, what actually did they try to learn after two classes? I, as a teacher, should know this. Uh, my students should also know this themselves. They should also come up with the idea that, yes, yes, after these two classes, I have learned this and that. So this is a kind of interesting way to engage students inside and outside the class as well. And uh, as I have mentioned, embedding, so there are beautiful ways, you know, to embed Padlet and several other platforms on Moodle as well. So Padlet is a different platform, but, but on Moodle, we can embed this. So this is also a kind of attraction because we'll have to actually attract our students. So we should think of so many ways, you know, to attract our students. And as, I, as you can see that, yes, here you can see the words share or embed. If you click this, if you click this, you would be able to see how we can embed it. As you can see, embed in your blog or website, copy link to clipboard. So even if you copy this link to, I mean, Moodle, then you would definitely, you would be able to see that it has been embedded the way that I have shared with you this way, the way that I have shared with you. Uh, let me share. Yes, so uh, you would be able to see if you just simply click that. Well, this is how you would see that on, on your Moodle platform. Okay, if you just simply copy link to clipboard, if you uh, copy that link and if you just embed it over here, then you would be able to see this wonderful, wonderful platform over here. Wonderful platform over here. So this is how actually we can engage our students. So my focus, my particular focus was on these two platforms, but uh, now let me get back 
let me get back to my uh, yes slides and uh, yes there are uh, you know ways how we can start if you are totally new if you are totally new to Moodle then of course all these slides all these information is important for you how to start actually how to start so there are information regarding this how to start and then uh, modules and uh, yes uh, let me share this the modules with you as i i won't be able to share how to get started actually because that's a huge thing uh, that requires at least two to three hours training uh, but today, as my focus is on how to engage our learners through Moodle, so uh, I hope that uh, you are at least familiar with Moodle or you will try to actually uh, be interested to use Moodle in future. And if you want, I may share the slides with you so that you can take help from the slides. Also, you can Google, you can find uh, YouTube videos through which you will be able to uh, get yourself started. And uh, there are thousands of ways through which you will get ideas how to start, how to use all the modules. As you can see that here, you will be able to get resources, survey, workshops. Uh, here, you, you, we also use calendar. You know, we, we have calendar also on Moodle and uh, there are admin role. And uh, here, uh, students will be able to see their grades. If you want, you may also hide the grades from your students and that depends on the teacher. Uh, here on Moodle, we have logs. We can attach files. Uh, there is also an option regarding help. Our students can seek help actually. And there are some login and uh, log out and email notification. So if we want, then uh, we can also link this up with our email so that whenever uh, my student is doing something, I should be notified through email. And that depends on the teacher. And uh, yes, of course, who's using Moodle? And just let me tell you, who is not using Moodle? Who's not using Moodle? And yes, uh, as you can see that there are thousands of uh, people, you know, who have been using these in their communities. So yes, uh, there are thousands of ways and uh, there are thousands of websites through which you would be able to get a lot of information. So. That was all from my part. Now, yes, uh, I would like to, I would like to uh, well, answer your questions or queries. But before that, if my students are here, I would request at least one of them to speak for at least uh, one or two minutes uh, or to share his or her experiences for one or two minutes so that the others may get some ideas how this engagement has benefited you throughout the, uh, I mean, coursework. So uh, I don't know whether my students are here or not. Uh, Sazia, would you like to share something regarding your learning? Yes, ma'am. Of course, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sazia Jain Shorkar. Uh, at first, I would like to thank you, ma'am. Uh, it always actually a uh, very pleasure for me to attend your webinars. Uh, now I actually want to share uh, something regarding the Moodle. Uh, I think uh, Moodle is a, a platform through which uh, we actually became more engaged nowadays, though we actually uh, are familiar uh, with this Moodle. Uh, to Moodle, uh, we actually share our everyday learning, uh, our question, uh, feedback from our teachers as well as our uh, classmates. Uh, after uh, completing uh, every classes, and uh, we actually get all the information regarding our classes uh, from our teachers uh, in Moodle and. Uh, yeah. Our every uh, courses is very much uh, organized uh, in this platform, and we actually uh, we, and and uh, we actually feel very much happy yeah. after getting this uh, information. Whenever we actually need. Thank you, thank you, Sasia. Thank, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Sazia, for sharing. 
So this is how, uh, you know, we can actually engage our students. And uh, that was a student live actually from one of my classes. So you also heard her perspectives, her, uh, I mean, her experiences. Now, uh, if you have any questions for me, Any questions from anyone? All right, uh, I do have one question, ma'am. Yes, of course. Okay, I'm I'm Fadila from Malaysia. Uh, I would like to know because uh, at my university we are using uh, what uh, author that we call uh, online platform. I would like to ask about uh, model, which is how to assess uh, in terms of uh, student assessment. For example. Um, uh, for quiz test, uh, how how can um, Moodle can uh, give an assessment uh, to the student? All right, that is my first question. My second question uh, is: um, uh, Are there any limit uh, uh, user and the storage uh, if you use Moodle? Uh, and uh, I think that too is my question. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for the lovely questions, Ismail. Thank you so much. Now, regarding uh, your first question, well, uh, you know, Moodle has been updated these days so much. Uh, I don't know well, uh, whether it's general or not, but, you know, in my university, we have been updating Moodle continuously, continuously. Every semester we see that there is something new on Moodle. So that, you know, interests us so much. Regarding assessment, a very, very, very important concern. Yes, of course. Now, there are thousands of ways, you know, to assess our students through Moodle. Well, we can assess through assignment. We can assess our students through quizzes, which includes short question, broad question, fill in the gap, multiple choice question, joining sentences, true, false, even listening exam. There is scope, you know, to, uh, I mean, uh, take listening exam as well, listening exam as well through Moodle. And also you may take a student survey. So you can assess your students through survey, through questionnaire. You know, as I have mentioned, there are so many ways through which you would be able to assess your students. And this is interesting because students actually are exploring uh, I mean, new things every semester. And it's not difficult for them. That's because they are, they have been uh, trying to make familiar with all these tools or ways uh, since the beginning of this semester. So students know that this is how my teacher is going to assess me during the midterm and final exams. So there are a lot of ways. So you don't need to worry about the ways. And regarding your second question, yes, of course. Uh, well, I don't know about the limited number of users or I mean, what is the limit of users, you know, uh, regarding each of the courses. If I consider one course, then I can tell you that uh, I share one course with uh, almost 180 students. One single course, one single platform, with 180 students last semester, 180. And with me, 181. So you can understand 181 in a single platform. So I think that we don't need to worry about the limit as well. Okay, Ismail, I think uh, you got the answers. A any Thanks. further question? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Any further question or anything that you'd like to share regarding your personal experiences? Uh, I mean, regarding the usage of blended learning platforms. Has anyone used Moodle? Anyone from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Is there anyone? Yes, yes, please.
Yes, uh, who wanted to speak? Uh, is there anyone who has used Moodle? In today's session, anyone? Okay, so no one who uh, I think has used Moodle so far, but uh, would you like to share something regarding your personal? Yes, Kilter. Kilter, did you want to say something? Kilter? Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Acha, ji, thoda net ka issue hai, to mullab awaz sahi clear nahi hai. Please continue in English as we have uh, uh, international participants. I, I understand Urdu and Hindi, but I don't know whether the other participants understand or not. So that is the thing. Yes. We do have many participants from Philippines. Yes, yes, that is the question. Yes. So if you can please... Uh, uh, well, Translate your question in English. Yes, anyone else? Kilter? Yes. Yes, ma'am. There is a question from YouTube that it's very confusing to download uh, the Moodle, Moodle software. From where to download and how to download? Please, guys. This is the uh, question from YouTube live. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing the question because I can't actually uh, look at the questions uh, which we are getting uh, through this YouTube live. But that's a very good question. Yes. Uh, well, I don't know whether it's so confusing to download it directly from Google or from any other uh, websites or not. But you know, the thing is, uh, I, uh, as a university teacher in my university, uh, will the university uh, itself, itself actually has that platform and uh, the authority, actually, we have a particular authority, a group of people who actually open up the courses for us. So I just simply uh, send the name and the course code to that particular authority and they open the course for us. But as far as I am concerned that this is a free platform. So I think if you can try on your own and if you fail, if you succeed, then yes, of course you, you have succeed. But if you fail actually to download the software and to, I mean, include anything or to work with that, then I guess you can take help from an expert. In that case, uh, your IT, any, anyone from IT department or from the concerned authority of your institution would be able to help you. But uh, I believe that it shouldn't be a problem because it's entirely free. And you know, as I have mentioned the statistics, well, millions of people have been using this platform since the lockdown and it has, it's, it's increasing, you know, day by day. So I think that won't be a problem. Take help from an IT expert, or uh, I mean, the I mean some people from your institution, or so that uh, they can you know uh, do something for you because you need also training. I think so training and uh, training on not only how to get started but also training on how actually to utilize all these tools to engage your students how to actually design the course, uh, what are the ways to assess students. So there are a lot of things which you should know before you know designing a course. So a lot of trainings actually, uh, I think are needed. So uh, that should be, you know, something which uh, should come together because uh, if you have two, three people or five people in your group, I think that would be more interesting for all of you. Uh, I mean, convenient for all of you. So any other questions from anyone? Uh, hello, uh, good evening, ma'am. I want to know, say, about a say one question. 
Yes, of course. Please, Ajit. Uh, I am say Ajit from say, India. <clears throat> say how far is it uh, security in regard to say person data or person any other methods? As a platform model, as a platform, how far is this security in regard to say a uh, person ID or person methods? Sorry, Ajit, are you talking about the security uh, security no. thing? As a, as a uh, any kind of say, the say, uh, app or platform, they have uh, some say, sort of security or limitation. So, but say, I want to know about the security position in regard to say person ID or person in matters or oh, any other. Oh, that's great. That's great. A wonderful question, Ajit. Very wonderful question. Yes, and uh, uh, that's great that you ask the question because, yes, we should know how much secured is the platform or how can we make it secure? You know, Ajit, one of okay. the most interesting thing, one of the most interesting thing about Moodle is that, well, a teacher, a teacher has that freedom, you know, to take students in the class to include participants in the course, uh, whether he or she wants to actually include 10 or more than 10 or 15 or 20, he or she has that authority to, you know, uh, I mean, include the number of the students or participants, he or she has the freedom to, you know, uh, hide, hide the names and IDs of the students if he or she wants. He or she can hide his or her ID as well, other than only his name or her name. Well, the entire freedom is with the, you know, admin. And a teacher should be the admin of this, of the course. That is how, you know, you would be able to, there are a lot of options, Ajit. And uh, how to actually give the enrollment key, whom to share with. For example, if I create a course for you, I may only share the course keyword or the password with you, only you, Ajit. Only you would be able to be in the course with me. No one else would be there in the course. But if I feel that I want more people with Ajit, then I may share the password with 10 more people so that I can have only 11 people with Ajit, only 10 people with Ajit. So in total, 11 or 12 people. So a teacher has that entire freedom and it's totally secured, totally secured, Ajit. I haven't heard uh, anything, I mean, negative regarding security, uh, I mean, regarding this usage of Moodle platform, you know? So yes, we have that freedom. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, Ragini. Ragini, would you like to say something? You have unmuted your microphone. Uh, uh, there is a question from YouTube Live. Okay. Uh, is there any limit on the number of participants and the class duration? Oh, uh, well, that's a different issue, you know, because uh, I don't take class on Moodle. Well, we, I actually shared how this can work as a blended learning platform. For example, I take class through Google Meet. I also take class through Zoom. So look at the difference. I'm not talking about taking classes on Moodle. I just shared how actually we can blend the platform with the class because we are taking classes online through Google Meet, through Zoom, through Click Meeting, through Microsoft. We may take class through any of the available platforms, but what happens after the class? Where is that platform where my students would share their experiences, their learnings, their problems, their uh, assignments, their classwork, their homework. So we need a platform, platform to support the class which we call blended learning platform. And Moodle is that blended learning platform. But, but we can also take classes through Moodle. You know, we can also take classes through Moodle. So I am just mentioning that this can be used as a blended learning platform. And 
regarding the number of participants, yes, I can mention, as I have already mentioned that, you know, I had almost 180 students, 180 students for this one course. So I think we can enroll as many students as we want through one single password. I repeat, I can enroll as many students as I want through only one single password. So in one course, I may get, I may have, I guess, more than 300, 400, but we don't have so many students actually in one course. I, as a university teacher, don't have more than 200 students or 250 students in one course because uh, we have limitation, we, you know, as a teacher, I am allowed to teach five courses. Okay, I'm allowed to teach, I can teach up to five courses. So if I, if, I mean, uh, if I consider each of the courses, then I don't have more than 40 or 45 students. And I can include all the students in, in the course at the same time. So that is the platform actually through which I assess my students through which I uh, engage my students, through which my students submit their classwork, homework assignment, through which my students uh, sit for the class test. So that is how actually uh, we can engage. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Will some of you have requested to share my PowerPoint slide? Yes, I would share definitely with the coordinator later. Immediately after this session, I, I have a meeting. So uh, probably uh, I would share the PowerPoint slide if you want later. Yes, uh, anything else? Okay, I guess uh, we are done with the question and answer session. Uh, so with the due permission of today's speaker, I would like to conclude this session. Uh, before concluding, I would like to thank, uh, uh, thank you ma'am, uh, thank you Afroza uh, ma'am for this lovely session and uh, all the participants uh, for joining us today. Thank you so much from the research circle and team. Uh, this type of webinars we are organizing frequently. So please also join our other webinars and uh, take a benefit of it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone.